All right. Welcome to our channel and a very empty table. Yes, yes. We have an empty table because today we're going to be talking about new acquisitions that we got. Uh huh. Uh, yes, we're going to be uh, looking at some pretty, uh, a lot of things Patrick didn't see yet. And apparently, yeah, some of these I haven't seen yet. And apparently, we're going from best to worst. We're going from, yeah, best to worst. So, pretty much. And uh, the best happens to the be. The point mine. of this video is Pat, <laughs> Patrick got a gun from a local gun store. And I got three guns from Royal Tiger Imports. Um, I've spoken about them before on the channel. Um, obviously, if you've heard about them, there is con slight controversy between their quality of stuff. I understand they came from Ethiopia, most of the guns. So, obviously, they didn't store them very well. Um, so pretty much with that, um, yeah, welcome to the channel. Like, subscribe, do the algorithm, please. And Let the algorithm gods not win. Yeah, well, they're going to win anyway. Yeah, exactly. Because we're slaves to their humanity. That's exactly. why we're here. We really so, need to stop copying admin. Shout out, shout out to administrative results. Yeah. We don't know you, but maybe we will. Yeah, who knows? My brother in Christ, let's go. All right, so first we're going to start with the best, and we will present Patrick. Somehow I got the best rifle. So we'll start with this stripper clip. Wait a second, whoa. That's, this not, is, a, that's not a gun. This is what I, this is what <laughs> I bought. <laughs> no, but this, this will give you a clue. This is 8mm Mauser. So that'll give you kind of a clue of what it is. So now we're going to go to it. I bought a Yugo M2447 uh, Mauser. Yeah. Paid 450 bucks for it from the local gun shop. Um, it's in actually very yeah, nice condition. Yeah, this yeah, is this quite is, nice. Quite nice. You can find them pretty easily. Yeah, you they're, can find them. There's still, and you know what? I got this for cheap because going on like yeah, they're, they're, not that they're you more wanna, than that, right? Yeah, if you go on like Gun Broker or any like I I don't know if people still use Arms List. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't. Know. These are like eight hundred dollar guns. Yeah. And like yeah, this, this gun's pretty. Nice. I mean, he's seen this before, but he yeah, hasn't really have, like fondled have, it that much. I have seen this, so pretty much this would be. You know, just like most, yeah, it's mo based, mo most Mausers during this time, they'd be pretty much a, a derivative kind of copy of the yeah. uh, the 8K. But um, so you know, the, not I mean smooth like a Mauser, but not as smooth as a Swedish Mauser. Swedish Mausers, I think, are the, the cream of the crop. This kind of feels like I do have a a, a Sheck Mauser. Um, it's about the same. It's about the same. Yeah, but um, yeah, quali I mean, not, quality wise, I mean, I don't know the wood though. The wood, I don't know what kind of wood. Did that we is. did we figure out what kind of wood? Is this no, beech wood or is I, it? Or we'd have it, to weigh it. Yeah, we'd have to weigh the thing. Um, um, and I'd have to get the weight of a gun without beech wood, which I haven't found yet. Um, cause, but I cause, bought it because grain it, is pretty thick. But yeah, this is this is thick wood. The yeah, the the, ri the, the pistol grip. Yeah, the yeah. wrist on this. It's like a Mossberg. That is a brick. It's like a Mossberg 500. Yeah, that's a brick. Like a Mossberg 500 with a wood stock. I know that's so, a very specific reference, but people will get that. Yeah, but so it's, that's nice. Not to go into a lot of history on this gun because we are gonna have yeah, a separate video on it. It's on a separate video. But um, the sling is an original sling. These guns were originally either FN or CZ produced for, oh, yeah, for yeah. Serbia, hence the Model 24 designation. Um, from the little bit of research I've done on some of the markings that aren't scrubbed off this gun, I think this was an FN Mauser that was arsenaled in 47, and then obviously they scrubbed all the markings off of it. But some of the proofs on it lead me to believe that it was a yeah, FN, FN Mauser. Um, yeah, so Yugoslavia actually didn't produce their own Mauser until the M48, which is basically a car 98k copy yep. real quick in the 1911 video or is it one of the videos i did an unboxing of stripper clips from a company called checkpoint charlie's um they were cheap i will say that um i got a little bit of complaint with them they're tight in these guns tight like a tiger and so are it's, yeah, they're even tight even his check mouse like, my check mouse yeah, um well i found out there's a bunch of burrs on these and i filed down some of the burrs and they're still tight um, so nothing against Checkpoint Charlie. I mean, it, they're, the clips are surplus. Or maybe we just, maybe they, they take a slightly different... Maybe they do, I, I maybe know. they don't. I don't know we'll too much about these, so... Yeah, this is, uh, yeah. kind of out of our wheelhouse. Yeah, and it's, uh... This came in through, Cher yeah. Cherries, Inc.? Yeah, this came through G North Carolina, I think? Oh, yeah, North Carolina. Zastava Fly, yeah. 8 millimeters. so... So they brought these into the countries. I think Atlantic Firearms brought a bunch of these into the country back in, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. But this is my first non-american or british firearm um yeah, and yeah. it's the first mauser i've owned technically it's your first piece of communism it's my first piece of communism and welcome to the club it's the first uh cock on open rifle i own because everything else is cock on yeah, closed. Cock and closed. All so, right. so so yeah so this that is the nicest it's just going to go down from here yeah it's, yeah it's going to get worse actually not technically the next yeah. step down really isn't that bad where the heck i haven't I put it i haven't seen any of these so these will so be the now, first time yes, i'm seeing them this is uh this is kind of not necessarily present but uh You've seen I, these once. I think, for, yeah, yeah, I've seen them. Yeah, you've seen that once. So here. Oh, yeah. 
Ah. Yeah. Now this is from Royal Tire. This is a Carcano. Ah, uh, that is I nicer am than a the other ones. absolute nerd boy for Carcanos. That is uh, nicer than the other ones. So yes, it takes the fucking full size. Bayonet. Yes, it takes a full that size. That is the selling point. Yes, it is. Uh, it does take a full size. I do actually have the bayonet here, but I left it somewhere else where I can't get it. So, <sighs> yeah, I know it's failure. Yeah, right. But um, this one actually from Royal Tiger. Um, this is listed that this did come from Italy. This isn't one of the Ethiopian ones. They do have listings. Um, I will say one thing on their listings. They list this as the Carcano model 9128. That is wrong. Um, sorry, Royal Tiger. Um, a lot of people use, there's a lot of wrong designations for Carcanos, and the 9128 it really isn't a designation. Um, more or less, that's for the, um, the rifles, these rifles uh, fitted for the Bombo, I think that's what they call it, uh, grenade launcher. That's really what that designation is for. Um, what this is really is what you would call a 91 Truppe Especiale uh, Modifico or modified version. So they originally weren't, didn't have this furniture up front and a couple other small things, but um, they used to have, this takes your normal regular Carcano bayonet here. Uh, they used to have a different style bayonet that was actually transverse. And this um, ring here um, for the uh, sling swivels here was actually not here. This, it was all one unit in the front. And I think something else to do with the hand guard. But um, this one actually, you think the designation 9128, this one was actually made in 1917. So this is actually a World War One gun, uh, which is freaking cool. Pretty sweet. Haven't shot this yet. And we also haven't shot, yeah, I haven't we, shot, we haven't shot that either. yet. Uh, yeah, all these guns we haven't shot yet. Action wise, it's every Carcano. It's yeah. like sandpaper. This, of course, is a bit of a Cosmoline queen. Um, it does yeah. have a good chunk of it, especially Man. in the sight. Yes, you may. Yeah, I haven't seen any of these guns yet. Oh, this that's a handy dandy gun. Like I the, like that. the Moschetto is pretty cool, but that's pretty that's cooler, I think. So like, we're I think, all... the, I think the TS out of all the Carcano. I mean, I like long <laughs> guns. I like the longer guns the best. <laughs> you can't put safety on. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, no, that's a that's a common thing. If, it is. If it's sticky, yeah. If, yeah. You, if it's sticky, you can't put the safety on correctly. Yeah. So that's a, that's a problem with the Carcanos. Um, um, so we're both acquiring more carbines. Yeah, yeah, I know. The yeah, one more smaller. The things. one carbine I have. Yeah, is most of, of the joke, guns we have but... are pretty long. Um, so we will have a video just on carbines. This is unloaded, right? Okay. No, no, yeah, it's only loaded. Uh, it's trigger on this one. Like every, uh, I think it's, I think it's like a two. It's not like the one. It's not. Out. It's not terrible. It's yeah. good. And then that's a cool gun. Yeah, it is cool. And also one thing I like that. that you don't see a lot, uh, especially when you get some of these. All the carcanos ever bought. Um, the uh, cleaning rod usually is never there. So I have a cleaning rod. Yeah, my mouse is missing a cleaning rod. Yeah, and I got to get a bayonet for that's that, too. That's kind of nice. Other than that, yeah, this is uh, this is the best one that I've gotten. Obviously, the other two are, that, are going to be, nice. they're going to, it's going to drop from here. Yeah, that's so, a nice gun. So, yeah, this is pretty nice. We're actually going to cross that that way. All right, let me find the next box. Yeah, and here's another piece. This box is obviously a little bit longer. A little bit. This is from Royal Tiger as well. I did take out the uh, the most of the uh, packing stuff. They actually they pack this very well. Sometimes Royal Tiger doesn't pack things well at all. I got it done once that was literally just in bubble wrap, no box. Um, unless that was a shipping issue, I don't know. <laughs> I would think that's a shipping issue. Put the bubble wrap back on this. So here, as I unwrap this bad boy, a uh, lovely amount of uh, bubble wrap here. Yeah, it's pretty large metal. Oh, that's the repair you're telling me about? Yeah. So here, as I yeah, ah, pull that away, here. this is a Manlicker 1888-90. So, this thing's pretty freaking cool. That is um, pretty freaking cool. So, a, li a li this little bit cool. about this. Uh, yeah, uh, Manlicker 1888s um, were Austro-Hungaria's um, rifle of choice uh, for a short period of time until they went to the 1895. Um, these are, and these went out to a lot of countries. Um, Steyr, OEWG, uh, made these guns. And I think they licensed them out to a, another, I, think, I don't know if it was Budapest for these guys or not, but these are, these are cool. And they went, they've been all over the world. Um, that's why, obviously, you're going to find them in Ethiopia coming out of the stocks there. This is a straight pull gun, which is quite nice. The safety's on, safety's off. Ooh, the power of the wedge locker. 
So yes, this is a wedge locker. Ooh, that's surprisingly smooth. Yeah, if you don't know, even dude, I didn't even clean this. It's gunky as heck. That is surprisingly so, smooth. So a wedge locker doesn't have normal locking lugs. Um, if you look at the front of the bolt face. There was no locking lugs there. Uh, it's just a big wedge that shoves into the receiver. Kind of like a Ross rifle. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of different versions of these. There is the original. Well, there was a couple more that were predecessors that they only made like 100 here, 100 there, I think. Then there was the 1886, which took an 11 millimeter uh, black powder cartridge. Um, and then, obviously, oh crap, the French came. The LaBelle came out. And then they uh, updated these to an 8 millimeter, which was 8 by 52 which was a semi-smokeless powder. And then in 1890, they actually made these, which was an update. All they did was kind of ream out the chamber a little bit to make it for the 8x50 cartridge, which is um, not very common to find. It's hard. You actually have to reload it. But uh, yeah, this is a cool gun. Uh, it does have a bit of a repair on the... Um, on the sling swivel. On the sling swivel. Uh, that's it, though. There's really nothing else wrong with it. Uh, I obviously haven't shot it yet, but... Um, that's a nice gun. Do you know when this one was made yet? Uh, 1891, this one was made. So this was near, this was literally just before, uh, the, oh, not just before, like slightly after the update. So it's a pretty cool gun. This will be smooth when it's fucking clean. Yeah, yeah, when it's actually clean. And we actually yeah. shoot it. I have, I do have, what do you call it? A end block here. Do not load it. We're not going to load it. Uh, this go. is, these, these are dummy rounds, but they do fit. Um, yeah, there we go. They're all done. This is my normal dummy rounds I put in every clip. No, I was every looking at the clip. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is my Nazi mark clip. So, just like that. Look at that. I'm not going to load it because the chamber is full of gunk and it's really hard to. Because uh, those don't really have primary extraction. Yeah, there's no primary extraction. It's very difficult to get stuck cases out of these guns. So, um, yeah. Yeah, there's no primary that was, extraction um, on those. That was, a, that was a good purchase. I yeah, must say. no, that, that's, that's a nice gun. That was a very nice purchase. Yeah. And now, finally, to. Now the quality gets real bad. <laughs> it, it drops off significantly. All these guns are in relatively good shooting condition. This one, though. Not sure. It's going to need a lot of love. Dust just came out of that chamber when I closed it. Good. <laughs> Another long box we have here that's probably out of frame. Oh, look, a box. Yes, a very long box. Stick your arm into the hole. No way, you might find something. I know about this gun. I haven't seen it yet. He hasn't seen it. This is one of the worst guns I bought. I know it's a prop. You know, that's not as bad as I thought it was. No, it's be. really not, in all honesty, but. In it's comparison, when you project. start to open the action, you start to look at everything, you're like, oh, wait a minute. So, um, as you're looking at this, if you, are a, oh. if you are a Battlefield 1 connoisseur, this is an 7087 <laughs> Verdoli Vitale. Um, out of my uh, nerd boy uh, fantasies, this is probably one of the cooler guns um, and the most enjoyable guns I like. I do have another one that's in way better condition than this. Um, we've there, actually shot that one. <laughs> yes, we've actually shot that one. I've actually reloaded for it. Wow. Um, yeah, this my is, expectations were high, the and they were met this? very well. What the hell is this? Oh, that's the uh, wedge lock. Uh, I'll show, we'll show a bit in the actual thing, but yeah, this is the wedge lock to hold the bolt back. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll <laughs> I'll iterate on yeah, that a little bit later. That's black powder. Yeah. Yeah, but this um, this was very cheap. Uh, this yeah. is a very cheap gun. This came out of Ethiopia, obviously from Royal Tiger. Um, the main thing that they list here is this is a B grade. Um, 7087 without the rear sight. Obviously, that's missing. That's why they're so cheap. This is a hundred fifty dollar gun. Um, and See, there is still cheap surplus deals. There to be is had still, but it, if you want to do the work, yeah, it takes a lot of work. So pretty much with this, um, these this thing, there will be a video on cleaning some of these. Yeah, well, I, we're gonna go on a. I have a, a good plan for this, which is people. Some people think it might be crazy, but whatever. So this thing is. Mm, sandpaper. It is not. There's you can't even close the bolt. There's rust. I think it's because uh, this is open. There's rust everywhere. Um, it's just, yeah. Uh, this one was specifically made, I think, 1889 from the Torino Arsenal. Um, this also does have, you can't see really, this does have repairs on the stock here. There's little tiny pieces of coiled copper wire holding that together. Oh, that I didn't see. Yeah, look at that. Oh, shit. Look at that long crack. Yeah, that's actually wire. that's a cool repair, actually. So, um, yeah, these were speculation, at least from Royal Tiger, I think. Um, they thought that maybe these guns were used for uh, men on horseback and cavalry type uh, positions in Ethiopia. Um, 
especially of the Ethiopian forces. They took the sight off because it wouldn't get caught in the, uh, the rifle scabbard that they had. Uh, that's the, the concept. I'm not 100% sure if that's accurate or not. Um, don't quote me on it. But yeah, this thing is definitely a project. It needs to be gone over. I did look at the bore, though. Um, I'm very surprised, actually, on the uh, condition. Actually, all of these guns. The bore on this Carcano, quite fine, especially some of the Carcanos I've gotten as uh, came out of Italy. This 1888 bore was also very well. It did ha does have frosting. It, it is frosted. and But this guy actually has a very relatively clean bore. It's slightly frosted, um, especially for a black powder gun. Um, this does shoot the 10.4 by 47 um, rimmed cartridge. Uh, obviously, you can't buy that anywhere. Uh, you have to reload it, and it's quite difficult to reload. But um, yeah, and my ideas for this is I have a Vetterly of this exact same model that does have its rear sight and is in really good condition that I can shoot. And I also have the Vetterly 708715, uh, so, or like the Vetterly Carcano, as people call it, with the Carcano magazine that you can actually shoot 6.5 out of. Um, but the one thing in the rendition of these guns, the history, is I actually don't have a single shot version. Uh, they are extremely hard to come by here in the States. So my idea is to convert this back to a single shot. Um, it's probably going to take a lot of time. Um, and also trying to find a rear sight for these is nearly impossible. So I got my work cut out for me. So maybe that'll be like 10 years from now I'll actually give you yeah. that video. Would I recommend buying these? Oh, hell yeah. Uh, I am a absolute nut for buying stupid things that really are hard to shoot because you can't find the ammo. Um, and for people that uh, say it's hard to get ammo, listen, you're not trying hard enough. Um, not wrong. You're not trying hard enough. You got make your own. Yeah, make your own. I know it's a difficult thing to get into. Uh, reloading sometimes seems very daunting. Yeah. Um, but do it. Obviously, it's a, it's a roll of the dice. Uh, that's a, it's always going to be with Royal Tiger things, especially at the lower price points. Always roll the dice. Um, I know they have hand select options. Um, actually, for this guy, I, Surprise did, the hand safety I did use a hand select for this one specifically. The other two, I did not. Um, just because I did want this to be a very nice one, especially since it is a wedge locker. Those systems aren't that strong. Um, so, yeah. So, I guess with that, um, yeah. Yeah, that's put all, it. Put all your algorithm stuff in there. I think we already said that in the beginning. I know this yeah. video is kind of long, but um, yeah, that's about it. And yeah, it smells like shit in here now because of Patrick. <laughs> See you later. Have a good day. <laughs> that part's pretty bad. Yeah, it is pretty bad, dude. Come on. <laughs> I was hoping for more oomph.